Hey, my name is Brent Floyd and I am a systems engineer with Palo Alto Networks. I had a customer reach out to me a little earlier today to walk through a web filtering configuration. Um, and this customer is in a little bit of a unique position where they want to do a strict whitelist of approved URLs and approved URLs only. So we're not going to do category based filtering. We're actually going to take a whitelist, build it out, and then we want to block everything else. So kind of foundationally a zero trust or ZTNA URL filtering scenario. So I'm going to start everything by setting our base case. I'm going to close out all of my tabs just to show that right now we've got full unfiltered internet access across a bunch of categories. We've got Google, we've got Stream East, which is a copyright bypass site for streaming sports games, um, CNN, Got some gambling sites, Wired, Fox Sports, and then a bicycle website. So again, kind of a kind of a nice gambit of websites that we could potentially run across. Um, some more nefarious than others, but in any case, only Google, CNN, and ESPN are intended to be in my whitelist when I'm done. So. To make that happen, we're actually going to hop over to my firewall and we're going to kind of unravel or reverse walk through how we want to build this. So to begin, we want to go ahead and build our URL category filters. Um, and so in this case, I'm building a very basic um, category that is matching FQDNs for CNN, Google, ESPN, and then also ESPN's content delivery network. I noticed in testing earlier that if I didn't have the ESPN CDN, the web page would render um, partially to not at all, depending on the browser that was in use. But at the end of the day, just a very quick URL list, couple of websites, one content delivery network. That's all I've got pushed down from my management platform. It says Panorama, but in this case, it's actually Strata Cloud Manager. So once we have a URL category built, we need to apply that to a profile. And so, as you might imagine, the URL category profile gets referenced by a URL filtering profile for customers with the right license, URL filtering or advanced URL filtering. So in my case, I went ahead and built what I'm going to call whitelist only, nice and clean, easy to understand. What I have is my custom URL category that I built above for ESPN, CNN, and Google only is set to alert. So I'm going to get traffic logs, I'm going to get URL filtering logs, but the users are going to be able to go to these websites completely unabated. What I've done to make this zero trust is set all of my other predefined categories to block. And so if I scroll down, it's block, 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 all the way to the end. And so this is a way that I'm saying I want to look at the custom URL categories first. I think these are at the top of the stack as we work our way down. I'm going to allow this traffic and block everything else. I'm not referencing a couple of the other URL custom categories, so it's not going to do anything with those, but any of the traffic that again hits anything that's not specifically whitelisted is going to hit one of these block rules. So once I've done the URL filtering profile, I can apply that directly to security policy or the way I like to do it is actually to apply it to a group of security profiles that has not just my URL filtering, but vulnerability and anti-spyware and AV um, profiles set and built. So in this case, I'm going to take this URL whitelist. I'm using main, mainly best practice kind of stuff that I've, I've built out over the years and pushed down with this URL whitelist only. And so again, We've got a profile group built that's doing a bunch of things to protect traffic that match any rules that have this set as the profile group. So with that, we need to actually look and see, well, what are my policies? And so in this case, I've already built this policy and it's applied to a test PC, but is not yet applied to the PC in question that we're on. And so if we look at my rule set, I have a filtered web access rule that right now applies to 10.1.1.10. 110, it's a mouthful. And you can see that I'm actually 112. And so all I'm gonna do on my backend management tool is go ahead and update that and this rule to include a match for this IP address. While that's updating, we're gonna look through the rule that's been built for my management platform. It's very basic. 
my source is coming from my inside zone with the source address. Again, we'll expect the dot one twelve to show up here in just a minute once our commit's done. Destination is the internet. And that's it from a match category. I'm looking at any application. I could easily do this as SSL and web browsing, but in this case, I'm trying to make sure I provide protection against other um, apps and other native services that might use URLs to do work. So Windows Update, things like that, where we might get an application match that's not SSO and web browsing. So again, in this case, if I'm doing whitelist only for these PCs, this is totally fine. The bit that trips people up is frequently people will also reference the URL category here, put in the custom URL category, and then try to do something with it. In this case, we're not going to. I want it to be any URL category. And I want my action to be allow, which seems a little backwards. It doesn't necessarily make sense for a whitelist only, but keep in mind that URL whitelist and the whitelist that I built from a URL filtering profile <clears throat> only allows access to Google, ESPN, and CNN. Everything else gets blocked. So think about the policy inside IP address to internet on any application. Those are the things that allow traffic to match this particular security policy. And then once we've matched it, what do we do? Well, we allow it by firewall, but we also use the profile. We use these security settings that we have in place. So we're allowing, but we're only allowing for CNN, ESPN, and Google. Keep in mind that all traffic egress from these IPs that has any sort of URL component, right? Anything that we can look and see is doing 80 or 443 where we can actually view the traffic is going to be subject to that URL filtering that we built. So if I come through and look at my task, we'll see if my commit is done yet that I pushed down for my management toolkit. It's nearly there. <clears throat> While this is finishing up, we will, again, validate that we have all of our websites loaded here, everything loaded without issue. Once this commit is done, we're going to essentially close these tabs and then reopen them and see what impact and effect our new URL filtering solution had. One thing that I do want to add while that commit is finishing is that one of the other critical bits to this, if we're trying to block modern web applications and block modern browsers, is that we need to put a block in place for quick. And this is a, a Google develop protocol. They're really pushing for it to be a standard. And it's, it's essentially there now um, where we're actually, I'm sorry, where the protocol itself is combining TCP and TLS kind of into one super handshake that's fully encrypted. So that prevents us, the firewall, from seeing what website, there's no SNI information, we don't necessarily know where that traffic's going. So we wanna make sure we put that block in place if we want to ensure that we're blocking websites from modern browsers. And so you can see that I already have the 10.1, 1.10, 1.12 there, it's referenced. So Quick's already being blocked. Go back, check our task again. At this point, the commit should be done. If I click a refresh, Hopefully what we'll see is that we've added the correct IP address now in my filtered web access rule. And so again, now any traffic from this PC, I close my settings out, but this is .112, will be subject to this rule as a match criteria. So what I'm gonna do is come back to my web, or back to my uh, Firefox window, close all those tabs that I had open earlier. Give this just a second. One thing that I saw before is that it took a second for some of the web filtering to take place. Um, so we'll see what we get now. So I'm gonna reopen all of those tabs I just closed. Again, keep in mind we were able to reach all of those without any issue earlier. So in this case, good. Seems like we're just, just now kind of starting to see the effect of some of those pushes. So we'll do the refreshes on the other page. Again, what I saw is it sometimes took, I'm not sure if it was a caching issue on the browser or if it was the firewall taking a second to program those blocks into the forwarding plane, but you can see that our first fan duel has now been blocked and it gives you the category. We don't necessarily have to do this page, but um, as part of kind of the client calming and the client information of what's going on and why it's going on, where we can insert these block pages, we will. So again, FanDuel shows up as gambling. 
pretty reasonable. Um, some other websites still have loaded, so let me go ahead and I'll just manually refresh this. So Wired is formerly one of my favorite tech websites, uh, categorized under news. This is now blocked. So instead of going through and manually refreshing those, let's try one more time. We'll close the tabs and then reopen. And we can see that my copyright infringement slash sports streaming website is now blocked. Google's still working. But not all subdomains are working. But what we can see, so if I go under about, I can see that that's hitting another subdomain and I got a block for that. Right? Um, About.google because I don't have a category permit for that. So these are the little things that might have to get cleaned up. But what I can do is search for things like <clears throat> road bikes, right? And I can find and get reasonable results from Google. But when I try to go view any of these links, what I should get is a block, right? This is an advertisement, got blocked as expected. CNN should be working, still looking pretty good. Again, we validated that Wired was blocked. We'll go to Fox Sports. Again, a sports site, but not one that we had whitelisted. That's blocked as well. Wired is blocked. FanDuel is blocked. ESPN looks good. We'll refresh that. And then let's see if I'm going to be able to buy a bike after this filter. And also, my bike website is blocked. So again, We've built our objects in the right order where we built the category. We tied that category to a URL filtering profile where everything is blocked. All 78 categories from my current version of code. And then the only thing that I have set as an alert, which is an allow and log, is the ESPN, CNN, Google only that I had built. And then again, I tied all that together by putting it as part of a security profile group called URL whitelist. If we go and look at my policies, filtered web access, I'm gonna scroll over and we'll see that if I hover over, URL whitelist. So this is again, traffic is matching this policy. Policy is then referencing the profile group that's providing that URL protection for me. Last bit we wanna validate is, well, what does this look like in the logs? We'll actually go into monitor and we'll look at traffic in URL filtering. What we'll see is that things like DNS are still working, outbound to the internet, no problem. Um, things that are web browsing or SSL that are being blocked are actually gonna show up here as threat because we're actually catching it through one of the security profile protections. So where we get the real info and the real deets on this is under URL filtering. And if I pop in here, what I'll see is that all of these categories are all being blocked. So everything, entertainment, games, computer, essentially everything that we can categorize as web traffic that hasn't been whitelisted is gonna be blocked. And then if we wanna see, well, what is not being blocked? <clears throat> we can look at things like, this is actually my traffic to the firewall for management but then I've got everything else should match that category for my ESPN, CNN, and Google. And again, these are all because we did alert. We're actually seeing a log for it. If I didn't have that set to alert, if it was just set for allow, we would not have any logging for the permits that are happening. One of the other things that I ran through while building these policies and profiles is it becomes pretty important as you're doing your troubleshooting and your initial implementation to look at something like your developer tools in Chrome. As they hide from me and I can't find them. And when you do a refresh and you're actually looking at the network tab, what you'll see is that you get a list of all of the domains, the get and the return status code. So this is what told me that I needed to add a, um, a star.espncdn.com. Where I see red are 
URLs that are being filtered. So in this case, there's going to be some content delivery stuff, but really we're catching or allowing most of what matters. Um, but we're certainly blocking a lot of ad generated traffic. So again, these are things that the developer toolkits allow you to go through, figure out what's working, what's not working, and what's not working if you need to do a permit, then we would add that into the whitelist. So again, if I needed to take this domain, add it in the whitelist, absolutely that's something that I could do. So with that, hopefully we've got a reasonably good understanding of what URL filtering looks like, and then more importantly, what a ZTNA or a Zero Trust whitelist based URL filtering would look like. Just to validate, close our tabs again, reopen everything, and again, we should see that effectively we are blocking everything from ad services, again, streaming platforms, but we're allowing our whitelisted applications, which is what matters. And again, we use the URL filtering log output to help tr troubleshoot and debug along with the developer tools on the browser. So again, if we've got internal applications um, that are still going out of the internet zone, then we may have to do some debugging to figure out exactly all the domains that need to be referenced. And then if we have external applications that have dependencies, occasionally we would have to add more than just CNN.com, we might need, so again, think of if you had Blackboard or some other educational application that then referenced um, or had some back-end application that got referenced as part of the render flow, we would need to add that as well. But again, the developer tools are a great way to get most of that information. Uh, again, under more tools here, uh, Chrome has the same thing. Again, you've got all the developer tools. As we do a refresh, again, we'll be able to see all of the gets, all the return codes, and then we can filter out on things that aren't working to help us make the application workforce as needed. So again, hopefully you've got everything you need to get started. Again, strict whitelist filtering here. Uh, typically, if we were doing this in a more open network, we would have our whitelist that we use to help bypass category matches that otherwise are not what we want to see. So we would do just a, a relatively small number of whitelist entries. And then in our URL filtering profile, we'll take a, a more general look at something like best practice is that by category, we would allow things like cryptocurrency and dating, um, but then we might block dynamic DNS, encrypted DNS, extremism, um, but then alert on things like financial services. So again, this is more of what a more typical profile-based filtering would look like, and then where you needed to do specific overrides for things like um, <clears throat> high-risk websites, so maybe you've got an internal uh, web service that has been marked as high risk is you could do the individual whitelist to actually override this. Keeping in mind that we always start from the top, anything we do, top down, left to right. So we start at the top. So if I needed to whitelist and override any of these category based actions, I could do it with my whitelist and the category that we're hitting will always show up or is always available in your URL filter. Again, your category is right here as well as your URL category list, along with the risk associated with it. So again, hope you have a great day. Hopefully this covers everything that we need for a basic whitelist. Thank you very much for your time.